Well, hi, everybody. I'm State Senator Joe Bochum from Iowa City. Thanks for joining our discussion tonight. This legislative session, the Iowa Legislature passed an, a small improvement to Iowa's medical cannabis law, a law that uh, has struggled over the last five years to help uh, patients in Iowa that need uh, access to safe, legal cannabis medicine. Uh, and the, the legislature worked really hard this session to pass this law. 137 of 150 legislators actually voted in favor of it, that legislation. It did a couple important things. It added physician assistants and uh, advanced registered nurse practitioners. Uh, it allowed them to certify patients that have uh, qualifying conditions. And it also made a modest increase to the amount of uh, THC uh, medicine that would be available to patients, uh, and it's something that uh, was a high priority of the people that worked on this legislation. Um, unfortunately, Governor Reynolds vetoed this legislation a couple weeks ago, um, and unfortunately she relied on some discredited advice from the Iowa Medical Cannabidiol Advisory Board. Uh, that basically would have made the medicine currently available to patients in the program ineffective for nearly 70% of the patients. Right now in Iowa, there's about 2,600 people that have uh, medical cannabis cards, and approximately 70% of those patients rely on uh, cannabis medicine for chronic pain, severe pain, or untreatable pain. And we know from scientific literature and patient experience that patients actually need higher levels of THC to get a therapeutic benefit. And so uh, people are very unhappy with this uh, veto. Patients have waited five years uh, for an effective program, and today Iowa's program continues to struggle. I get email every day on this topic from Iowans around that have chronic conditions, that have sought the best medical care available, taken the most powerful drugs, and still don't have relief from their debilitating conditions. Uh, an email I received just today from a, a constituent it tells a story about her sister who she saw over the weekend, and she says, Teresa suffers from a severe case of rheumatoid arthritis. The medication she takes has destroyed her GI system, and she can eat very few things. So she is alarming, alarmingly thin. She is also in constant pain. Fortunately, she lives in Massachusetts, so she has access to cannabis for pain relief. Because methyltrexate, a chemotherapy agent, has ruined her stomach, so she can't take oral medications, so she relies on on, on cannabis. There's a lot of people in her situation. Many people who rely on opiates would ha have better non-addictive pain control if they had access to medical cannabis. I appreciate your efforts. This is an, an email uh, from a constituent who happens to be a longtime nurse in Iowa City uh, and somebody that wants to provide compassion to patients, and in this case, it's a story about her sister. I received an email yesterday from a veteran saying, I would like to work to get veterans assistance under this program, and how can I do that? What can I do as an ordinary citizen to impact this process? I think the process uh, it can only be impacted by stories and by you. Uh, I think as we look at the history of medical cannabis in Iowa, uh, f five years ago, the first law that was passed, people said there's no way I was going to pass a law that's going to make cannabis available to people, and we did that. Uh, a couple years ago, there was a modest improvement to the program. We be began the manufacturing process and dispensaries in Iowa for the first time, uh, and people said that wouldn't happen, and it did. Uh, unfortunately, the modest improvement to the current program uh, it was struck down by the governor's veto. That's why S S Representative John Forbes and I, John is a pharmacist from Urbandale, have called on uh, our colleagues to join us in coming back to Des Moines for a special session to override the governor's veto and pro provide assistance to people that we know need it. 
32 other states have comprehensive programs. Not a single one of those states limits the amount of THC that's available to the patients. In Iowa, we have about 11 conditions. Uh, probably nine or 10 of those conditions need a higher dose of THC. And why that's important is that patients are going out and finding the medicine they need. They're either spending a lot of money in the five dispensaries here in Iowa, or they're seeking it from other states, or they're getting it illegally. They know what their medication needs are, and it's about time that Iowa put together a program that doesn't require people to break the law, uh, that are sick and, and hurting. We need, we need compa a compassionate program here in Iowa, and we can have that. And it's, it won't be a lot of work to come back to Des Moines for a couple hours and override this veto. Uh, as I said earlier, 137 of the 150 members of the General Assembly voted in support of the bill that the governor vetoed. Hey, if you're just tuning in uh, to this Facebook discussion, I'm State Senator Joe Bocum from Iowa City. Uh, just talking about the, the recent history of, of medical cannabis in Iowa and the recent veto by uh, Governor Reynolds uh, of a bill that would ma have made a modest improvement to our program uh, and, and made it possible for Iowa patients to get the, get the care they need. So I think what, what I'm interested in doing now is just t letting you know that uh, we are trying to make as many um, uh, contacts of legislators as we can across the state. Uh, right now, the legislators are being asked to sign a form that would uh, be sent back in to, if we get enough uh, members, two-thirds in both chambers, uh, we can call it the legislature on its own, can bring itself back into session. So we're inviting you to reach out with a phone call or an email to your state senator and your state representative uh, and uh, ask them to, uh, to uh, come sign that form and come back and, and help fix this law. So I'm, I'm going to take a few questions. Uh, D David Barnett asks, have re any Republicans sent letters back for a special session yet? I haven't checked with the Secretary of the Senate, uh, David, to find out. Uh, we've just, uh, I just mailed mine in on Monday. Uh, today's Wednesday. I'll, I'll be checking in at the, at the State House tomorrow to see what we, what we find from folks. I've gotten several people have uh, sent notes to me after they have contacted their legislators. And I know a couple members that uh, have, have said they're, they're not going to come back. Uh, they, they're going to wait till next year to try and fix this program. Um, it, Angela asked, does, does it help to send messages to senators not in our district? I think generally it's best to contact <clears throat> the people that you elect. They are accountable to you uh, more than people that uh, live in other parts of the state are. So I think it's, uh, it's okay to contact members from around the state. But uh, your best bet is to contact folks that you have the ability to reelect or or uh, or or not. So I really appreciate people getting on again. This is Joe Bocum from Iowa City, member of the Iowa Senate. Uh, I want to really thank all my colleagues that have been so supportive of this uh, issue. I know in our Democratic caucus and in both the House and Senate, we had every single member uh, support this uh, bill. We have great advocates in the, in the House and Senate Democratic caucuses, uh, and I expect that we're going to see responses back from all of them. Um, and, uh, and I really appreciate that support. Uh, people have been leaders around Iowa trying to provide relief to people that are suffering in our state. Uh, Corey Linz writes, I got an email from Jack saying there would be no special session. Um, I don't know how many Jacks there are. I know one Jack in the, in the legislature, Senator Jack Whitfer, who's the majority leader in the Senate. Um, and uh, that's, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Why is the governor listing the advisory board over legislators? Well, the governor has, the Governor Branstead appointed the advisory board. Uh, and uh, from the beginning, I think they have both said but uh, that they would listen to the advice of the advisory board. The law actually requires uh, the legislature to change 
the, the, what, what medicine is available to people. Uh, an advisory board gives advice and of course the elected officials get to decide whether they like the advice or don't like the advice, whether the advice makes sense or not. So uh, it's probably a question for the governor, but she's pretty much, she's pretty consistently um, said that uh, she would listen to the advice of the advisory board. Well, I think there is an opening or two on the advisory board. We need, we need some of the physicians out there that are supportive of a, a strong, compassionate medical cannabis program that's focused on patients uh, to be on that medical advisory board. Were any Democrats invited to private meetings with Linda Upmeyer? Um, I don't know. I think I think maybe uh, Representative Forbes uh, might have sat in for part of that meeting. Uh, so I believe that I believed uh, Democrats were invited to that meeting. Since the beginning of this year, uh, about eight, when we talk about uh, medical cannabis as an alternative medicine for patients, uh, we have a significant number of Iowans that suffer from severe chronic untreatable pain. And just since the beginning of this year, there's been more than 850,000 uh, prescriptions for Schedule uh, two narcotics, more than half of those for opioids and fentanyl type narcotics. And we know how addictive those are. We know those are cause people uh, big problems and um, they're dangerous drugs and it concerns me that when we have a safer alternative that is not nearly as, addic as addictive or dangerous that patients that want access to it can't have access to it and it worries me that uh, the big pharma or the pharmaceutical companies are maybe at the at the heart of why we're not making more progress here in Iowa on this. So I appreciate people checking in. Uh, again, State Senator Joe Bochum from Iowa City. Been working on this medical cannabis issue for a while, um, and uh, we we just have to keep we just have to keep working. Um, uh, one, a question from Angela Kerr: Can you write a bill to add patients and caregivers to the board? Um, I think that's one of the major changes that needs to be made to the board. Uh, there were several bills filed this session to add patients to the board. There, in fact, the Senate uh, in the last two years has passed uh, legislation that would have had patients on a board had the Senate bills been taken, the Senate's bill been taken up. Um, and so I think, I think one of the crucial needs in fixing this program is we have to hear from patients. The patients' voices have to be part of the decision making. Uh, and I'm afraid that uh, the, the Medical uh, Cannabidiol Advisory Board uh, really does need patience on it to, to bring that, bring that much-needed perspective. It seems that's what's missing uh, with our policy work on this. We, we are concerned about abuse. We're concerned about youth access. We're concerned about people driving under the influence. And I'm, I'm concerned about all those issues. We need to have strong programs to keep cannabis away from our, our teenagers and our kids. Uh, we need to, no one should be driving under the influence of anything uh, that's narcotic or, or uh, alcohol for that matter. Uh, we need to have strong, responsible programs. But I think rather than be uh, uh, overly anxious or uh, paranoid about those kinds of uh, potential concerns, we need to put the patient at the front uh, of, the, of our mind when we make policy in this area. We need, we need patients uh, and policy that helps patients. One of the issues uh, that Corey Linz brings up is it costs less too. Um, actually, one of the things uh, that J uh, John Forbes told a story last week, he's a pharmacist from uh, Urbandale, member of the legislature. He had a patient come in that uh, was on the medical cannabis program and because it's so expensive, because the, the potency of the medicine is, is not sufficient, he, cannot, uh, he can no longer afford to be uh, a medical cannabis patient. So he has uh, gone back on to his narcotic prescription 
that John fills for him at the pharmacy and he actually had to increase the number of milligrams, I think it was of morphine, that this particular patient was getting. It, that makes no sense. I mean, if somebody is getting the pain relief on something uh, that is, has less uh, toxic, less addictive qualities, uh, we, should, we should make it possible for them to afford to get the medicine they need, not, not be forced to go back uh, to the big drug companies who we know are willing to sell us just about anything to make a profit. I really appreciate all the questions. I'm kind of reading them as they, as they come up here. Um, uh, Carl Olson asks, uh, Governor Reynolds says she wants to work on this during the interim. What is she planning to do? That's probably a question for her. I know uh, I'm ready to sit down with her. I know Representative Forbes, there's other members of the General Assembly that are, have put a lot of time and effort on this. Uh, Representative Bob Kressig. Uh, from Waterloo's been a leader on this, uh, uh, other members. Uh, so um, I hope that she'll reach out to us and we can get, if we're not going to have a special session, that we get going on um, figuring out how to move forward. Uh, we need a program where patients have access to effective medicine and we need to, members of the legislature and the governor and her staff need to do their homework. They need to come informed. They need to understand what's working around the country for a few hundred million Americans that live in states that have access to quality medicine at affordable prices. What will it take to, Jason asked, what will it take to get a, a patient advocate on the board? Well, we just need to get, you know, the votes. We need a bill. Uh, I think a lot of members are supportive of it. It just it just didn't get added in the House bill. It was really good this session. We had a bill that we actually had during the light of day. Uh, it sat around for a while after it came over from the House, and the Senate actually did pass the bill on the very last day of session. It was like the second second to the last uh, uh, bill that we did. Unlike in the past, the two previous bills that have been passed in Iowa were passed uh, sometime, they were, they were developed and written sometime between midnight and three or four in the morning, and they were passed somewhere around five or six o'clock in the morning, where uh, in both cases, those bo bills came out of Speaker Upmeyer's office, uh, and it landed up, ended up on the Senate floor in the wee morning hours after we'd been up all night in the Senate with no chance really, barely, to, not even to read the bill, understand what was in it, or make any changes to it. Uh, that's the process that we, we went through on the first two pieces of legislation that became law. In fact, the current program that exists in Iowa because of this veto was a bill that was written in the middle of the night with uh, basically zero opportunity for uh, any member of the Iowa Senate to have anything to say about it. So uh, at least this session, we had a bill in the daylight it was done before uh, with several weeks left in the legislature, which is no, a normal process, is good process. Uh, and of course, the Senate waited till the better end uh, to pass the bill that we passed because there was concern in the House about about the bill they passed. Uh, it's quite quite a quite, it's had quite a quite a ramble through the legislature this session, um, but it did have bipartisan support. People, you know, legislators have heard from their constituents. They understand the importance of this. That's why 137 people voted to support this. You know, when 80% of Iowans say, provide a safe, responsible medical cannabis program so we can benefit from it and our sick neighbors and friends and family members can benefit from it, um, you know, it's time to act. So, um I hope that uh, I hope that people will, on this call will reach out to their legislators in the next uh, week, <coughs> in the coming days, and uh, see if they'll come join us for a special session. This is Joe Bolcom. I'm in Iowa City, member of the Iowa Senate. Uh, losing my voice. Uh, but happy to be on this uh, on this discussion with you. I appreciate all the questions that are coming in. Um, again, you know the patient stories 
have made it possible for Iowa <clears throat> and the members of the General Assembly to approve a medical cannabis program. And patient stories are going to be what it takes uh, to fix this mess we're in right now, whether we get a special session or not, or looking ahead. But uh, right now, the pressure needs to be on members to tell us why they can't come back to Des Moines for a couple hours to, to, to vote, this thing, uh, vote this thing out. Uh, we, also, we also need to support these businesses that have come to Iowa uh, to <coughs> basically manufacture these medicines and make them available to us. Um, there's not really a very good business model right now. Uh, for this program in Iowa, we really need we really need to fix it so that we keep these businesses here, uh, providing the support that so many people uh, want, uh, and so much benefit that could be available. And I'm not naive. You know, medical cannabis is not going to work for everybody. It just isn't. But patients that have uh, taken powerful drugs with enormous side effects that have gotten the best medical care available that still can't get the relief they need. They deserve access. They deserve access to this medicine that so many other Americans have access to. And they shouldn't have to break the law. They shouldn't have to travel to Colorado or other states. We should be able to provide medicine for them right here in our own state. Sorry about my uh, voice. <clears throat> well, I really appreciate people uh, people t tuning in. Um, I'll take a couple more questions here. We think we're gonna. Uh, I I would like to invite you back uh, next Tuesday. Um, we're going to do this again and give an update on what we've learned um, <clears throat> from uh, whether legislators are going to agree to. Uh, to agree to a special session. So next Tuesday, June 11th, from 6.30 to 7 o'clock, we're going to do another Facebook discussion. Um, and, uh, and, and I hope you can join us. I'm going to do a couple more questions. Uh, raw cannabis and personal cultivation, question mark from Angela. <clears throat> um, <coughs> virtually uh, every other state allows access patients to uh, plant material or raw cannabis. Um, uh, there's only, of the 32 states, I think only two states, Iowa, Minnesota, maybe one other state, does not allow patients access to um, the, the plant material itself. We know that in states that allow that, it's cheaper for patients. Uh, it's the most cost-effective way for patients to purchase medicine. It's also a really effective way for people to dose uh, dose themselves when they when they need uh, medication, um, but it's we, we are a long way from that here in Iowa. Uh, people, uh, we we are, we are a long way from that here in Iowa. Also, about half the states <coughs> allow people to grow their own medicine, and uh, you know we we don't really know how to grow things in Iowa. Why would we allow people to grow their own medicine? at home, which again we know is cheaper um, and it's more accessible to people in Iowa. We have more than 800 pharmacies in Iowa. There, we have only five medical cannabis dispensaries. Uh, it's another area of the law that needs to fix, to be fixed. Uh, we need far more uh, dispensaries uh, if we're going to have access to cannabis medicines for, for Iowans. We have, I think, 22 states. I'm sorry, 22 counties in Iowa, we have zero to five patients today, uh, and they're mostly all in rural Iowa. There's very little access to cannabis medicines in rural Iowa. So I was being facetious about saying we don't know how to grow things in Iowa. We absolutely can grow anything under the sun, including uh, medical cannabis. I just think the, the legislature and, the, and kind of the policy around that uh, makes people, for some reason, extremely nervous. So uh, raw, raw, raw cannabis and growing your own uh, are, are issues for, for patients, for sure. Uh, it's something that we're just going to have to uh, work for in the future.
I really appreciate people getting on this uh, Facebook discussion tonight. It's kind of I, only one person gets to talk, unfortunately, um, and uh, there's a, there's a, a lot of really good questions. Uh, David asked protections for discrimination against patients in the workplace. Any talk about that? Um, not very much. I mean, we're we're at a very rudimentary place with this of just trying to figure out you know what the medicine is, what conditions. We also have a very limited list of conditions. We should we should the, there are a number of conditions that ought to be added. The Senate actually passed a bill two years ago with. Uh, more than 20 conditions. Uh, we have in the current law nine, and we've added a couple. The medical uh, advisory board has added a couple more. <coughs> well, I'm running out of water. I want to remind you to reach out to your legislators. Uh, you, everybody has a senator and a, and a uh, representative. We've been uh, putting up some information about how to get in contact with them. Uh, everybody's got a home phone number or cell number. That's always the best. But certainly you can email folks and uh, ask, them, ask them to come, come join us in Des Moines for a special session to overturn this veto. Um, that's what needs to happen now. If we don't overturn the veto, we're going to wait another year at least. Uh, we go back to work in January of 2020. Legislature doesn't do anything fast. It'll be next July before any changes actually occur with this program. So uh, there's no reason. There's no reason to wait another year. We've waited five years to get to this painful place of having an ineffective program. So it really is. The time is now. Uh, and I really, again, uh, thanks for thanks for joining us. I'm Joe Bocum, member of the Iowa Senate from Iowa City. Uh, we're going to we're going we're gonna to do this again next Tuesday, uh, June 11th, from 6:30 to 7, uh, and we'll give an update on what we've learned about uh, the interest of people to come back to Des Moines and and fix uh, this struggling medical cannabis program. So thanks for thanks for your time this evening. Have a good evening. <laughs>